It's good to be in the house of God this morning, amen? I'm glad to be in the house of God this morning. I want to welcome everyone to Life Connection Church. We're glad to be in a place where God moves, where we've got a living presence in this place. I just want to just want to get you a little bit into my mindset this morning. You see, I was listening to this song, and, it, uh, and part of the song goes, well, I might be in a daze, but you can't have my praise. You see, this morning I've... I've been thinking a lot about sometimes we get into we get into a funk we might be in a bad situation or a bad circumstance or like sister Angela was talking about this morning sometimes it's just easier to just be tired and just not do things and just it might be easier to maybe give the devil a little bit of praise with our silence but I'm of the mindset this morning that it doesn't matter what I'm in it doesn't matter what kind of days I'm in the devil ain't getting my praise my side my praise is going to one my praise is going to God. So let's get into that a little bit this morning. If we wouldn't praise God, I might lift you up. You are awesome and great. You are greatly to be praised. It is you that I serve and you alone. So I'm going to praise you no matter what, no matter what hill or what valley I might be in, no matter what circumstance I'm in, I'm going to praise you and you alone. Glory to you. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're magnificent. Thank you, Jesus.
for freedom, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's no small thing that we have to be thankful for. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, church, hallelujah. Give him praise, church. Give him honor in this place. Give it all to him. Hallelujah. Lay your burdens at his feet. Lay your will at his feet. Give it all to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. There is no one like him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, you are worthy of all honor and all praise. Amen. Please remain standing. Hallelujah. There's nothing like the presence of God. Amen. Amen. We are privileged here at the Life Connection Church to get into the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. A lot of people are having church today, but a lot of people are not getting into the presence of God. And we want to praise God for that. Also, uh, we have a few announcements to make on Monday at 7 p.m. Upstairs in the tag room, uh, we have Exploring God's Word with Pastor Sanzo. If you haven't been through this uh, lesson, this is a great uh, lesson to give you an overview of the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. So please make yourself available if you haven't to uh, partake of that class. Also at Wednesday at 6 p.m., we have the Spanish Bible study uh, and also the youth meeting that starts at 6 p.m. And we have three separate classes at 7 p.m., uh, Financial Peace, and I forgot the other two. But it, you can look on the website to check those two out. But, uh, and also on Saturday, we have Celebrate Recovery at 10 a.m. and Monday at 7.30 p.m. Amen. Uh, electronic giving is in the back, and I'll have our ushers come forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing in this service and what you're about to do in this service and for this church. We ask right now that you will bless every giver in this place, oh God. Lord, I pray that it will be multiplied to the furtherance of your kingdom here on this earth. Father, we give you the praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. to recognize um, our Bible quizzers. I see Brandon in the back there. Uh, he's helping with the ushering. <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> Natalie. Caitlin Nickerson is here somewhere as well. Um, also over there with you. Okay, she's being... No, I was looking for Caitlin. I already got her. Uh, all right, I see fingers going every which way. <laughs> so... Caitlin is somewhere here, and, uh, oh, there she is. Okay, bye, Mom. All right. Well, with they, uh, we just want to recognize them for doing well yesterday at the quiz tournament. They won a match. They did the best they've ever done. So they're growing, they're learning. We've got a couple of others. Um, um, Elizabeth and uh, Ashley were not able to be here this morning, but so we just want to recognize them. Thank you. God bless you. Let's continue worshiping.
worship you. I worship you. And I call you a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship. Even when I 
time when you're pursuing God. You're never wasting time when you take time out to pray and to worship and to praise God. That's never a waste of time. Amen. In the denomination that almost never sees a move of God this week, some students at the only one out of 13 seminaries they have that even believes the Bible at one of the mainline denominations in the United States. And uh, they have 13 seminaries. Only one believes the Bible is the Word of God, that Jesus rose from the dead. And at that one, some students this week began to pray in a chapel service, and God began to visit. Do they have all truth? No, they don't. But you know what? God always honors hunger and thirst. And if you're drawn near to me, he said, I'll draw near to you. And so that's why it's never a waste of time to spend time praying. Not just going through motions, but making sure our heart is set towards God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. And here at Life Connection Church, we want it to be a habit a discipline, a way of life that we pursue God. Not just go through a religious routine, but we pursue God. Let God work. Amen. Amen. Well, we're not done yet, and you're not done worshiping yet, but I am going to bring the preacher up here. We're so glad to have Brother Nathaniel Letman and his wonderful wife, Leticia, who I think has went out back with their little boy uh, temporarily. But we're so glad that they're here. Um, Josiah met them at a uh, meeting last year. And um, so uh, we got to talking about it. thought, let's get some of these guys over here. He's been instrumental in helping, was it P7, campus ministry, both? both? Okay, we'll go with both. Uh, and that's uh, getting, reaching and winning souls in public schools and on college campuses. And um, so we need a lot more of that in Manassas and Prince William County. Amen. And somebody besides Josiah say, right? All right. Amen. All right. God bless you, Brother Nathaniel Letman. God bless you. I 
Hallelujah. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. You're so good, Jesus. You're so awesome, Jesus. We worship you, God, today. Thank you, Lord God. Man, there is such a rich presence of God in this place. Oh, if you need anything, anything, this is the place to get it. Because God is very clearly here. Um, and so my wife and I um, and our young son, Misael, were enjoying being in the presence of God with you together. It feels like a little, little taste of heaven. And uh, we're thankful for that. I also want to give honor and thanks to your pastor, Pastor Sanzo, uh, and his wife uh, and wonderful children for the invitation uh, to be here today with you and allowing me to, to, to experience this, this awesomeness over here in Manassas. This is incredible, incredible. Um, and uh, Josiah and I met uh, for the first time, I believe it was last summer, at the um, P7 CMI Summit. And uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful, mighty young man of God. And uh, it, was a, it was a good connection that we had there. Um, and so I'm thankful very, very much. Um, and thankful for my wife for being here as well. I want to honor her. Thank you so much. It makes a big difference <laughs> when your wife is there by your side. But we're going to go in our word to the book of John, chapter 14. I feel right at home here, right at home. Um, <laughs> Sister Ali uh, has a, uh, we, we go way back. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Sister Rachel as well, my former Bible quizzing coach. <laughs> so I really feel at home. <laughs> Sister Ali's son, um, you may be familiar with him, uh, Reverend Chris Titus. He, um, he said, hey, oh, man, I wish I could be there, too. He's like, when you get there, there's no one thing. They are a worshiping church. And he was 100% right. This is a worshiping church. And I'm so thankful for that. God is good. We're going to focus our attention um, at verse 12, John chapter 14. Verse 12. And it simply says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater. Everybody say greater. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Let us pray over the word and pray that we are hearers of the word and that God has his way this morning. Dear God, I thank you so much for your word. I pray, oh God, that you allow us to be good ground for the seed of your word to go, God, and to produce fruit in our life, God. Give us ears that we may hear, and Lord, not just be hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Have your way in this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. All right, you may be seated. Um, so we'll make sure service ends at the normal time. I believe it's 3 or 4 p.m., so we won't, we won't be here too long. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all right, all right. We got so we are in the book of John, chapter 14. And the context of this is Jesus is at the Last Supper with his disciples, in the other Gospels, when we get to the Last Supper, typically it's just a few verses, not even a whole chapter. But here, John recognizes the gravity of this moment and realizes, and maybe not in the moment, but as he's writing the book of John, he's realizing these were Jesus' last words before he was going to lay down his life and die for us. And so the gravity of last words, the, the importance of last words, John decides not to spend one chapter or a few verses, but it begins in chapter 12 and doesn't end till chapter 17 
of just that portion of time. He wants to capture every word. He wants to, to make it elevated to recognize the words that Jesus is saying right now are crucial and are going to be crucial to the disciples who become the apostles, and it's going to be crucial to you and I today. So as he dives into Jesus' Jesus's speech and, and what he's saying to his disciples, we reach a point in verse 12. And all of it's good when you get a chance, just dive in. It doesn't have to be Easter. You can just read the Last Supper anytime. <laughs> but when you read verse 12, it causes us to pause because it's saying that now we're thinking about everything that Jesus did, all the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the healing that took place, the deliverances that took place, the miracles, the multiplication of food, all that Jesus did in just three and a half years of ministry, powerful, turned the world upside down. That's in less time than it takes to get from ninth grade to twelfth grade. So less time than you're in high school, Jesus turned our world upside down. And he wasted no time. He was very intentional with everything that he did in reaching those who were hungry and hurting, in reaching those that were thirsty and wanting more. And here it's saying that we shall do greater. So if, if I were to put a title on this message, it, it, would, it would be the greater. I want, I want to figure out what is that greater. What could we possibly do greater than Jesus when he walked this earth? And so... Um, a little bit about me, a little bit about me, and uh, I was born and raised in an uh, apostolic church, um, filled with the Holy Ghost at the age of seven, and when I got to high school, um, <laughs> I remember ninth grade, we had a career project, you had to choose three careers and do like a thorough investigation, job shadow, and, and find out more about these careers. And so I said, all right, I'm either going to be maybe an astronaut or an oceanographer or a pediatrician. As you can tell, I had a lot of clear direction. I was all over the map. I had no idea what I would be uh, doing with my life. I ended up in space or the ocean or I don't know, maybe in a doctor's office. I don't know. Where would I be? And so, but I continued to seek God and to seek more of God. And, and I remember a distinct moment, and, and everyone needs to have this moment, whether, no matter what age you are, when th this thing becomes real for you. Your relationship with God is not based on your parents or, or your church, or, but your relationship with God is real between you and the living God. And so I remember going down to my basement and I just began to seek God. And I began to cry out and I fell to my knees. And I said, God, I need to know you, God. I want to know you for myself, who you are. I want to know you. And, and I began to feel the presence of God responding. And I, and I ended up prostrate before, the, before God, just laid out and weeping and crying until I literally had no tears left. Because I needed to know God for myself. I wanted to experience him. I didn't want to just read about him in this holy book, but I wanted to know him for myself. And I know many of you in this audience have that same hunger, that same passion. I can tell by your worship that it's not just enough to, to come to service and, and just fill a time slot, but to know God and experience him for yourself is so important. And so God and I had, had some good conversation. Even in that moment, he, I felt him say, well, why? Well, why? Like, I want, that's a good question. <laughs> and searching my heart, is, I told God, because I love you so much. I just 
love you. I just want to know you because I love you. Have you ever, anybody ever been in love? Anybody in this room? Remember? remember? I just, I just want to get to know you because I, I love you so much, right? I'm in love. And, and I told the Lord, I said, God, as real as you can be to me is as real as I can make you to anybody else. God heard that prayer. <laughs> oh, God heard that prayer. I moved on to college, um, and in high school, you know, we had um, a Bible club going, and it was good. Um, but I went to college, and I said, you know what? Nobody here knows me. Nobody here knows I'm a Christian. Nobody here knows I'm Holy Ghost filled. Nobody here knows anything about me. So I can play low key and fly under the radar. And I, I'll be just all right. I won't have to, uh, you know, uh, deal with anything. Just, I can just hang back and just chill. And um, <laughs> God had heard that prayer that I prayed back in uh, high school in the basement. So I'm there, and I'm in the dormitory, and this is first semester, and I don't plan on saying a word about the Lord, about anything. I'm just going to. Do my schoolwork and just hang back and just uh, chill a little bit. But one of our sweet mates came in the room and he said, I just, I just feel empty. I feel like there's just something I'm missing. There's just something that, that I need. I'm like, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. He's like, I don't know. It's just, you know, and, and he went into uh, an experience he had at a church and he had some church hurt, and he, had, he was dealing with some things, and, and, and he was just, I just, I'm just looking for something, but I don't know what. And he's like, mm, don't say that, because I knew exactly what he needed. So the Lord did not allow me to be a closet Christian. <laughs> and, uh, and so I began to talk to him about exactly what that emptiness was, that, that God space, the Bible calls it, a belly or, or uh, um, a space just for God because the Bible says out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. And so as we began to have Bible studies in my dorm, it was just supposed to be a small, quiet, one-on-one -on -one Bible study. And uh, his roommate came and then another sweet mate came. And then the next thing I know, there's 10 guys in my dorm uh, for a Bible study. I'm trying to be low key. I'm not just <laughs> not, not trying to make a big splash. Uh, before I know it, there, there's not enough room in my dorm for people to fit. And so we go down to the conference room, and then young ladies from the other dorm start coming over, and, and the Bible study is growing 20 and 30. And I'm like, I was supposed to be low key here. <laughs> But God moved. God filled them with the Holy Ghost. They were baptized in Jesus' name uh, under incredible circumstances. I mean, we had nowhere to baptize. We had a pool on campus, and they wouldn't allow us to use it. So they went, we went into one of the, um, the athletic facilities, and they had a, a, an old, crusted-over ice tub where athletes would uh, I guess do ice baths to, for their aching muscles. And uh, so we got a hose, we filled it up, and it was filthy. I mean, there were things floating in it. I mean, just, and I said, you know, we can wait till Sunday, and we can find a church, and we can, he's like, I have got to be baptized in the name. And he just hopped right in there, and he, he was baptized in Jesus' name. He didn't care how cold it was, how dirty the water was. He just knew that he had to be baptized in Jesus' name. And I know that this thing is real. I know that it's real. I know that it's real. But I continued to read the Bible and we read through the Gospels and we read through the book of Acts. And I, I took a semester to study abroad and found myself in Costa Rica. And I happened to be in a town where nobody spoke any English. Nobody spoke. Uh, I was up with the host family, and, and so we had to use our hand signals to communicate. My host mom would say, hey, hungry? And I'm like, uh, see, see? And, 
I mean, it was a struggle. But God, I, again, I was just there to learn Spanish, but God had other plans. There was a young man named Steve and another uh, guy named John. What, what do you do when you're around hungry people? Like, what do you do when, when, when people around you are just thirsting for God? And so we ended up starting a Bible study there, and we would meet. Uh, the school was right across from the beach, and there was a little park called El Parqueo Jurásico, Jurassic Park. It, I don't know why, why they called it, but a little park with benches. And so we were able to sit down and have a Bible study once a week. But then uh, homeless people began to walk up and ask for money. And so on one particular day, this is probably the second Bible study we were there, somebody came up and uh, was asking for money. And the Bible study student, uh, Steve, was he was very, very straightforward, very blunt, no nonsense. Uh, and he said, uh, why don't you go get a job? And then uh, focus back on the, the Bible study. And, uh, and the guy said, well, my hand is withered. And his hand was just like this. And it had a, 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 a mark, a scar on his wrist. I don't, I don't know if maybe some tendons were cut or what have you. But he was crippled. And he said, I, I, you know, I can't work because uh, most of the jobs, whether it's fishing or whatever, you need both of your hands. I, you know, I can't work. And so Steve, full of faith, he said, uh, well, if God heals you, will you go get a job? <laughs> he said, uh, yeah, 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 I will. And so we prayed right there, and I saw a withered hand open right up in complete healing, tears streaming down his face. And I said, this thing is real. This thing is real. And so, <laughs> trying to keep quiet, just, just, just having a little Bible study. And the next Tuesday, I believe it was, rolls around. And now there's five homeless guys, and they're there, and they're saying, hey, and we're like, oh, man, he came, he brought all his friends. And, uh, and they came, and they said, hey, uh, his hand was healed, and hey, I'm, I'm, I'm on, I've been addicted to drugs for a long time, and, and I've, I've done some awful things to my family, and I've, I've done some awful things in order to, to, to meet this crave of this addiction I have. Can you please pray for me? So we prayed, and he was miraculously and instantaneously delivered of drug addiction. And I said, this thing is so real. And so he went, and over the semester, people came uh, from the streets and prayed. I saw deliverances from drug addiction, healing, miraculous signs and wonders. The, the, the craziest story was probably when um, my... Steve, the Bible study student, he was telling his host mom about it. She was telling her friend about it in a neighboring town. And uh, Steve calls me or comes over to where I am and he says, hey, um, they need us to go and pray for another young man uh, over in uh, two towns over. I said, all right, let's go. So we went, and it was a young man. He was about 21 years old. Uh, he was at the wrong place, wrong time, and he was shot with a bullet, but the bullet lodged into his skull. And... At the place where it was lodged in the front of his skull, the doctors couldn't do any um, kind of surgery. It was too close. So uh, every now and then, the, the bullet would touch his brain, and he would have seizures as a result of that. So he, he wasn't able to finish school. He wasn't able to get a job. He wasn't able to do anything. And so the, we were there with the family in the living room, and we say, hey, do you believe that God can, can heal him? And they said, yes, we believe it. And I said, all right, well, if we're all in in belief and believing here with faith, uh, God's going to do it. And we prayed right then and there, and nothing happened. <laughs> so we said, all right, well, we prayed. Let's go home. So we left, uh, and that week was um, uh, a spring break, so we were able to travel to other parts of the country during that time. Uh, but during that, the next day, he had the worst seizure he had ever had in, in his life, as a matter of fact. He was rushed to the hospital, and he was in a coma. And during those two days, the doctor said he's not going to make it, um, plan and prepare the funeral. And so we got word, and I said, well, God, so how it's supposed to work is you pray, and then they're healed, not, 
you pray and then they die. Like that's that's not kind of how it how it works. It just just wanted to let you know, Lord, we we brought it before you, and uh, am I missing something in here? How is this supposed to work out? And uh, on the third day, out of the blue, he just woke up. He was perfectly fine, perfectly normal. And they, they said that wasn't supposed to happen. And so the doctors did more x-rays, and, and they found out, and the doctor was stunned and said somehow the bullet has moved from the front of his skull all the way to the back of his neck miraculously, and we can easily now remove it uh, and he would be 100% fine. God shows up for his people. You can bring anything to God, and he will respond. No matter the need, there's no need that's too great. There's no need that's too small. Whatever it is, God is the same God of the Old Testament, the same God of the New Testament, the same God today. There is nothing that God cannot do. There's nothing that God cannot do. And he's looking and searching for, for spirit-filled people to operate through them, to, to know that no matter if they're on your job, it doesn't matter where they are, that, that God can show up and he can do miracles, he can heal, he can do anything, whatever the need is. There's nothing too hard for our God. But I still come back to verse 12 that says, and greater shall ye do. Everything thus far that I've mentioned are things that Jesus has done. What was it that in that moment that Jesus has his disciples' undivided attention? What is it that he's thinking of? What is it he's looking down the road and thinking and saying, oh, I, I had some, there were some awesome moments in my ministry, there were some awesome times in my ministry, but oh, greater things shall ye do. What was he looking forward at? What was, what was he speaking to? I believe the answer is in the book of Acts. This is after Jesus has died on the cross for our sins, risen from the grave. He's been, was amongst uh, the disciples and, and believers for 40 days. And then he ascended into heaven. And then in the book of Acts, chapter 2. And I'm going to begin at verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody say the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. There were, Jesus did many things. And we, in, in the book of John, the same chapter. And it, he healed. He did miracles, things no one had ever done before, but the Holy Ghost. There is nothing like the transforming power of the Holy Ghost. There is nothing in this world that can resolve emotional issues, that can resolve wounds and hurts from the past, that can literally transform the heart from a corrupt heart to that which pleases God than the Holy Ghost. There is a need in every single life. Every single person has a need for the Holy Ghost. Now, now they may try to fill that with a party or, or, or entertainment, as, as we, we learned about in the Bible study this morning, or, or it could alcohol and drugs and, and, and relationships and trying to fill that emptiness, that space where, where, where God completed us, right? When, when Adam was in the garden and he was complete and he was in a relationship with God and then sin entered into the world, 
and cause a, a, a division and a parting between God and man. Everyone has that need. We interact with people on a daily basis, whether at school, whether on the job, whether at the grocery store. And we have to go in with an awareness that ah, these people need the Holy Ghost. They need to be filled with the Spirit of God. This is what Jesus was referring to, greater things. And, and if you l read further in the book of Acts, chapter 8, and you see how Peter put his hands, laid his hands on the Samaritans, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And in and, and Acts 19, there were more believers, and Paul was there, laid his hands on them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And their lives were changed and transformed, and they were to walk in the power of Almighty God. That means that no longer are they, they have to be near the physical person of Jesus, but now you have Jesus on the inside. That means no matter where I am, no matter what I'm dealing with, my, my world can be complete chaos, but somehow there's peace on the inside. It, it doesn't matter. There could be temptation and sin all around, but the Bible says that there's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what circumstances I may face, we all need the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians talks about and says that for, for this mortal body to be changed to immortal, right? This, our, our corruption turned to incorruption, it's the quickening spirit, the Holy Spirit that's on the inside that's that, that causes that chemical reaction that when the trumpet sounds, we'll be in a moment in a twinkling of an eye, we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. It is that spirit of God that we all need. And I'm closing. I don't know if musician, musicians or what have you, but God is doing a special work in the last days. And as Sister Sanzo said, we are in the last days. As the world gets darker and darker, people hunger for light more and more. That desperation, as, as the sin in the world kind of just sucks the moisture right out of the air. And, 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 we, and we, we, we walk in dry places and and, and, and people who are just searching for something that's real. We know what they need. That hunger and that thirst is all around us if we're willing to be aware of it. We may believe or... or, or Think, well, you know, if, if somebody needs that experience where, where they lift their hands and they acknowledge who God is and his reign in their life and, and they repent of their sins and, 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 and lift their hands and worship and ask God to fill them, you know, that, that typically happens at an altar in a church. Right? And, and I can bring them, but I'm going to need Pastor Sanzo to go and, and, and pray them through because... Uh, I'm just a regular uh, apostolic, and, and, and um, he's a super apostolic. And, and I'll, I'll let the, the, the super ones take care of, of, right? But God is calling us in this day, in this hour, to take this out to where we live. God is wanting as 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 the world gets darker, God is wanting as, as hunger is growing even more desperate. That people are going to be filled with his spirit just at home, in a Bible study. Entire families together. As we're, we're in their homes and as we're talking with them. As, as we're in our schools, in the school classrooms, in the hallways, in the lunchroom, at work, in in. Places that, 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 Lord, church happens here in this compartment. 
This is, this is where you do all the supernatural stuff right here. Work stuff happens at work. School stuff happens at school. Spiritual stuff happens at church. God is wanting to break these walls wide open through you in the hallelujah Jesus. From the very beginning, Adam was called to have dominion and to multiply. That plan has never changed. God is wanting to fill so many people that you are connected with, with his spirit. But he can't do it without you. When you look at Acts chapter 10, and there was a man that loved God. The Bible says, feared God with all his house. And, and he lived for God to the best of his ability. And he had an angel visit him. The angel could have just told him, hey, you need the Holy Ghost. But he didn't. He said, Cornelius, send servants down to Joppa. There's a man named Peter down there. And have him come up, and he's going to tell you what you need to do to be saved. And so he had to, and then the Lord sent angels to Peter. And he had a vision, and, and then so that Peter would be ready, that when Cornelius' servant came to Peter, that Peter would go up and, and, and reach that house and break down the gospel and have that experience where you see later on that it says, while Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on Cornelius and all his house. Well, well God... Why is it to send an angel over here? Why is it to send an angel over here? And why, why? you could have just cut out all of that and saved a whole lot of time because Joppa wasn't right next to Caesarea where uh, Cornelius was. It took some time and days for them to get there. Why couldn't you just tell the angel to tell him what, just to pray and ask for the Holy Ghost and fill him with the Holy Ghost? Because that is not how God operates. He called mankind to multiply. The gospel will never, ever come through an angel. As a matter of fact, a lot of false religions came to be by someone who was enlightened by an angel. But he's desperately calling you, and we can all stand, that there are souls around you, whether you realize it or not, that are desperate and becoming more desperate for the things of God. People are becoming more and more aware of that emptiness on the inside that only God can fill. Nothing else can satisfy it. Nothing in this world. People will be born and people will die with that same emptiness. Nothing to deal with the the internal workings of a corrupt nature. Nothing to deal with, with, with wounds and hurt and pain unless a person will go and open our mouth and speak and let somebody know exactly what they are missing. I believe that God has a revival in this church, in this day, where testimonies will be pouring in, Pastor Sanzo, that I, I was just there and, and somebody mentioned a need and I offered to pray and, and the next thing I know they're, they're praying and then, and then they're speaking in tongues. I believe that reports will begin to come in. I, I was just at school. I was just having just a, another Bible club and, and I wasn't, you know, just I was just going over the lesson and Next thing I know, we're beginning to pray for a need, and then the presence of God began to move in that classroom. But if we don't open our mouth, if Peter was never willing to go to Cornelius, who would have shared the gospel with Cornelius? God has it designed that the gospel is only shared from man to man, from woman to woman. So we have a job to do in this last day. 
We've got to reach somebody. I've heard it said, <laughs> Lord, sometimes it's a struggle. I wish you had just filled me with the Holy Ghost and just taken me home. So I didn't have to worry about no more of the struggle, no more of, a, of, of just this life and everything I got to deal with. But he didn't. Because we have a responsibility to multiply. What was Adam supposed to multiply in the garden? The likeness and the image of God. Right? We have the same responsibility to multiply the very spirit of God in filling this soul, in filling this soul, in filling this soul, in filling this soul, and seeing lives and hearts transformed and changed. So I don't know if there's anybody in this room that has never experienced the infilling of the, the mighty hand of God. The Bible says there's, there's just two prerequisites, two preconditions. Faith, believing that God is who he says he is in his word. And repentance, a turning away from sin and a complete surrender to God. God is here and more than able to fill anybody in this room with his spirit. But there are others that I was filled 10 years ago. I was, I was filled 20 years ago. Or, and, you know, I just kind of been trying to play it low key. I, know, I, I love God. God knows I love him. But, you know, just uh, I don't want to be that guy on my job. You know, I, I don't want to be that girl, you know at school or, or wherever I am, I, I just want to be a normal human being. God didn't call us to be a normal human being. God called us to represent him, to be ambassadors of his spirit and to multiply his spirit in this earth. So wherever we are, if, if you're desiring the Spirit of God, you can come forward and, and we can pray with you right now. And if you, you just want a stirring up of the gift of God that's on the inside of you. Lord, I, I was filled with the Holy Ghost, but to be honest, I haven't really tapped into that peace that you have for me. Yeah, I received it one time, but I'm not living in that state of joy like I should be. I'm not allowing that flow to be in my life. I've actually succumbed to some of my situations and some of my circumstances. And I'm kind of reacting to this and reacting to that instead of allowing the kingdom of God on the inside of me to establish my mindset and my rule and my way and how I behave and how I make decisions and how I think. God, I need to re-surrender myself to you. Wherever you are, I want to invite you to come forward. Hallelujah, Jesus.